Good morning, second grade, and we're going to work on math now. We're doing the next step in our multiplication worksheets, which is multiplying with the number four. So we've learned about different patterns and tips for multiplying by, with twos and five, zero, one, ten, and three. Today we're going to look at multiplying with the number four. Right, we are going to start with doing it problem with the number line. This is all, we're going to work several problems from your worksheet. Your homework today is page 239 to 240. So get that out right now and we'll work some of the problems together and you'll feel ready to solve the rest on your own. We're going to start with a number line problem. Um, it's number three. I didn't have room on my number line for the very first one, but so we'll have three times four, we're going to solve this. We're going to count by fours. We're going to use the number line going by fours. We're going to say four, eight, twelve. So going in jumps of four, we can find our answer, all right? Four times one is four. Four times two is eight, and four times three is 12. There's our answer in the number line, okay? So uh, number one, number two, they're also number line problems. Then we're going to do the skip counting. And as I've said before, the skip counting can really be helpful. Even you can refer back to it as you're solving other problems. If you feel like you can't, you're not sure if you've got the right answer, you can look back at your skip counting because it's a beginning way to become familiar with the products when you're multiplying with fours. And like I always say, it can be easier to skip count when you know a song. So I'm going to help you um, fill in the skip counting with a song, okay? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty, forty-four, forty-eight. You want to go all the way to twelve. Singing fours is really great, right? So all of these represent a fours multiplication problem, right? So if you're doing working on another problem and you're not sure if you can find the answer, come back to where you've skip counted by fours and find your answer there, okay? Four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20. These are the answers to multiplying by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48. Singing fours is really great. This is just counting up by fours every time. All right, then we're gonna do work making an array, which is something we've practiced at various times. We have the math problem four times five. It's asking us what is the answer? Four times five. Now, we can remember what we know about fives. Anything that's multiplied with a five either ends in a five or a zero. Okay, so we can keep that in mind. Let's say four times five. We can check up here. One, two, three, four, five. Four times five, we can find the answer right there, can't we? Four times five is 20. We can also use this array box to find our answer. We'll take this top number in our multiplication problem and put it here at the top of our box, right? Four, and we'll do four dots. Three, four. And the second number we'll put here on the side and we'll have five dots. And now you just fill in all the way through. And this is also telling you your answer. If you wanted to sit and count every single one of those dots, you would get 20 dots, right? So an array box can help you picture really what's happening in your multiplication problem. Number six is another of that same type of problem where we have the equation four times four equals and then we have the box over here to fill in, four times four. Four, make sure it's four on both sides, and then we just fill it all the way in, and we get four 
8, 12, 16. The answer is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. Now in the back, you have a couple. At the bottom, you have a word problem. Um, on the back, you have some more count, jump, jump counting to solve and other uh, opportunities to make an array. And you also get to review um, subtraction where you have to rename, right? So you're going to pay special attention to all the details of what you have assigned to do and work hard on your multiplying by fours and your reviewing two-digit subtraction with renaming. For our reading, we have been learning about dulcimers, a certain type of stringed instrument. And in our reading, we specifically read an article. That means a nonfiction um, piece of writing that has all about, it's just to give you good information. So um, it has usually has headings that you know what each part is about. It oftentimes has pictures that have um, captions underneath to give you more information. So we read an article about dulcimers. Now, whenever you're studying something, researching a topic, it can be a good idea to collect all that information. When we read this article about dulcimers, when I read it to you, that was a lot of information about dulcimers and a lot of different types of information that if we want to do something with the information, if we're researching a topic, we want to have ways to collect the information that we're learning. And this is one way. I'm going to show you one way that can be good for collecting information. This is called a word web. Okay, so let's make a word web about dulcimers. Get out your reading book and open it to the article about dulcimers. It, the article begins on page 154. Let's look together at the article and make a word web of information that we learned, okay? So we know dulcimer is a, the name of a kind of instrument. Well, when looking at the article, we also know that there are different kinds of dulcimers. So I want you to look in that on page 154. There are pictures and descriptions of the different kinds of dulcimers. So we know this is the big basic word for it, but there are different kinds. So we can look at that page together and see, oh, well, the kinds there are mountain dulcimers, right? There is according dulcimer. I thought those were fun where two people could sit at it and both play the music. And teardrop, or no, um, hammered, hammered dulcimer. It was different. It was seemed like you played it with a different type of, a different type of, uh, pick, right? The way it was played. Now there's also, dulcimers were made out of all different types of wood. We look at page 155, we can see it lists some of the different types of wood that dulcimers were played out of. And then we can add this to our word web. Walnut or cherry. And if you're being even more detailed, you could add what kind of sound each of these would make. Spruce. These are all names of types of wood that a dulcimer could be made out of, right? One part that I thought was very interesting is the part where the holes for the sound to come out, they could be any kind of shape. I thought that was an interesting bit of information and even the, the types, they were fun, right? They could be a heart shape. They could be like a fancy, fancy letter F. They could be a cat. Isn't that fun? Or they could just be decorative little dots. So I thought that was really interesting that the shape of the hole doesn't really matter. It's just where the sound comes out, right? And then um, there's more information also about the different shapes of the actual body of the dulcimer, which is where we got the, the one was uh, teardrop shaped. So the article told us all about dulcimers, but if we really wanted to collect what we had learned, 
we would go, we might want to do something like this. It's almost a way to take notes. Like, okay, I was learning about something, I was very interested in it, but how can I collect some of that information, take notes on what stood out to me, what was important or interesting. Okay, so that's one of the ways you can do it, is by making something called a word web. You know, sometimes we've done things with reading where we've compared and contrasted characters or ideas and stories and we make, make a, a Venn diagram to do that. This is another way, another type of diagram, a way to collect your information and think about what you've been reading and kind of assess it. So I wanted to do that with you just to look at all the different interesting information we actually learned in that article about this certain type of instrument. Your workbook page today is 327 and 328, and you are going to fill out this information. Um, this is like the all the parts. You're going to label the parts. You're going to look back. You're going to probably want to reread this story because of how much information there is in it, because they want you to read this down here and only put a mark next to something that's not correct. So you're gonna to have to be pretty familiar with the information you've learned. And the back is also more in information, just all about the dulcimer. So, and even reviewing some of the vocabulary words about pluck or strum, okay? So you're gonna do page 327, 328. You should have your reading book with you so that you can look at it again, read different portions of it again, and um, really know your information. In English, we've been talking about writing a how-to paragraph, writing a paragraph that gives clear instructions. Now we've practiced looking at other people's paragraphs. I've, I've written several for you to show you what it's like if, to write the clear instructions and include all the parts. Now it's time for you to make your plan of your own how-to paragraph. You're gonna do page 261 and 262. 261 is another example for you. And 262 is a place where you are going to get to write your own ideas. And if you do this worksheet carefully, and um, really writing neatly and thinking about how you're gonna do it, you will have already um, done almost a practice run on your final paragraph, okay? So you're gonna think of your title, which you already know is gonna start with how to. And some of you have told me your ideas of what, you, what kind of things you want to, um, what kind of instructions you wanna give. I said how to give a tea party, right? How to give a tea party. That was my title. Then you need to right away think of your topic sentence. So just think about that, but make it simple. All of this, giving instructions, your best bet is to keep it very simple. So the person who wrote in your worksheet, they are talking about how to plant seeds. So their topic sentence, they know they want to use the word something about plant, flower, seeds. It's got to have those kind of words in it, right? Then they're going to talk about their materials. So if I know my title is how to give a tea party, then I know, you know, my topic sentence is going to need tea party, uh, maybe fun, something about that, okay? Having a tea party is fun. That's a great topic sentence, right? Then you tell how to do it. So this next part is an important step. Think of the materials that a person would need to follow your instructions and then list them on your worksheet. They have two lines for your materials. Now, that's not a very much space, so keep, be sure that you're thinking of something you want to explain that's simple enough that your plan will fit right on this one worksheet, okay? If you find yourself thinking of so many materials that you were running out of room, or so many steps, do you see how many steps you can take this time order chart? Four steps. So if the thing you're thinking about telling us about takes way more than four steps, and you need much more than two lines to do all the materials, think of a simpler thing. Okay, either think of how to simplify what you were going to tell us about or give us instructions for, or just think of a, a simpler topic. Okay, so after you've listed materials, then you're going to practice 
writing the the bulk of the the details that they're important part of the thing of your paragraph. You're gonna do your time order words first. You're just gonna get to practice that first, and then think of how what. What's the first instruction you're going to give? If you're thinking about it and thinking clearly, you could practice making this a full sentence, your first sentence. First, fill the flower pot. That's what the example has right there. And then you have your own choices. People can say first, second, or you can say then, next, all right, last, finally. The words that you use, you get to use four, you can choose what they are. It's gonna begin with first, all right? But after this, you get to decide. And the last one, you can either choose last or finally for your final one, all right? So this is what you're gonna practice doing. After you've thought of your title, brainstormed a little about your topic, make sure you've thought of what your materials are gonna be, gotten four simple sentences down that are time order, then you think of your ending sentence. And your ending sentence, down here, your ending sentence is gonna be something that sort of reflects or repeats what your topic sentence was, okay? So when I wrote my paragraph about how to give a tea party and my topic sentence was having a tea party is fun, my ending sentence was something a lot like that. I love having a tea party, right? Something similar. So you're going to practice all of this. Think about an ending sentence that ties up what you've said, that reflects your topic, all right? I want you to work carefully on this, and I know it might be a little bit challenging. I encourage you to talk to a grown-up or an older sibling if you need help getting the words onto paper. This is going to really help us take our next step to having a finished paragraph that we could present to each other and give instructions to one another about um, new and interesting things. I loved hearing about some of your topics you've already come up with. I really look forward to us being able to instruct each other. Right, so this is an important step, and I want you to do your best. Our spelling list this week, list 27, is an interesting list. I think it's kind of fun. It's a, where we get to use base words and words when we add a plural where we have to change the spelling. For example, this is one candy. Over here, this is one, two, three, four candies. Some peppermint, some candy canes, a lollipop, a Hershey's Kiss. Okay, well, candy, C-A-N-D-Y, when there are four, when they're plural, C-A-N-D, we change the Y at I-E-S. Okay, candies. We follow this same rule when we do puppy. Draw a little dog puppy. What if there's more than one puppy, right? I wish I was a little bit better at drawing puppies. <laughs> Bet some of you are much better. You could draw some better puppies. Okay, what about two puppies? Well, we're gonna take out the Y and add I-E-S, puppies, right? Your words in the pattern, your pattern words for this spelling list all follow this. Candy, candies, puppy, puppies, all right? So you're gonna be doing page 107 and 108. It's give, gonna give you a lot of tries, a lot of chances to practice doing that, writing the base word and writing the word as a plural. Now the other part of this, of your spelling list this week, are some memory words. Friend and heart. Now, friend and heart, they're called memory words because they really don't follow the regular rules, so you just kind of have to memorize them to know how they spell. You can't really 
You can't really sound it out. You have to just know it, all right? This is one way to remember how you spell friend. Right here, E-N-D. What does that spell? End. And if you can remember as you're writing friend, F-R-I-E-N-D, that end comes right at the end of friend, it will help you spell it correctly. Now, what about heart? Heart. Well, let's put a heart around here. These letters in the middle, normally when we see these letters, we would probably read it ear, right? But I want you to remember that this, in this case, heart, those middle letters make the R sound like star. Heart, right? So, friend, heart. Those are your memory words. And we have some review words. So you're going to do page 107 and 108. Now, if you would probably do better if you just leave those worksheets inside the book, then you won't lose them, misplace them, fill in the answers, and take photos and turn them in. The 108 is a fun worksheet. I think you'll enjoy doing it. And I look forward to seeing your work come in and being able to check.